in Christ Church, London, under the leadership of Rev. Godwin Ajegbu, invites you to our power service, deliverance, healing, restoration, and salvation. Are you broken or oppressed? Come and be partaker of free salvation. Our service times are Monday Deliverance Service, time 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Friday, Bible Teaching and Prayer, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday Service, Holy Ghost Move, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come and receive power to overcome in life. For more information please call us on the following number, 0742948 or email revgodwin at dominionchristchurchlondon.co.uk or dominionchristchurch at yahoo.co.uk Trains and Buses Station, Alperton Station, Wembley Central Station, Wembley Park Station, Hanger Lane Station, and Harlesden Station. Welcome once again to the Dominion Christ Church television broadcast. My name is Pastor David McKivitt standing in for a great and wonderful man of God, Reverend Bishop Goodwin, the senior pastor of the Dominion Christ Church in Wembley, a ministry that believes that miracles are still taking place, a ministry that believes that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever, that Jesus who healed, delivered, and work miracles in the Bible days is still healing, is still delivering, and is still working miracles today. All the way through the broadcast, you will see the address of the church coming on your screen. You will see the times of the services coming on. Please make a note of that address. Make a note of the times of the services. There are also free telephone numbers that will be coming on your screen from time to time during the broadcast. Please make a note of those numbers. They are numbers that you can phone for counselling, for advice, for prayer requests, for prayer cloths. Phone any one of those three numbers. The last number on there is my number. I won't be able to answer it now because I'm live, but I will get back to you quickly as soon as I possibly can. Even if you don't need prayer right now, make a note of those numbers because you may very well need prayer and counselling in the future. So make a note of those numbers and have them saved somewhere so you can contact us. And I want to thank every one of you that has sent your prayer request to us, that have contacted us, myself, Bishop Goodwin and others are praying for you and I want you to believe God for your miracle. Today I'm going to read to you a verse from the Word of the Living God and I'm going to be reading from the book of Acts chapter 9 verse 6. Acts chapter 9 verse 6. It says, And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be totally what thou must do. Let me give you a little bit, a bit of a background to this. Paul was on his way to Damascus. He was going to persecute the Christians. He had already stood by while Stephen was stoned and he was out to destroy Christianity. But on the road to Damascus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus himself appeared to Saul, who we know today as the great Apostle Paul. And when the Lord revealed to him that he was indeed the Messiah, his first words to Jesus was, What will thou have me to do? And I find this is so true of many, many Christians. The number one question that I ever get asked is, Pastor McKivitt, how can I know my ministry? How do I know what God wants me to do? What is God's will for my life. 
When a person becomes a Christian, they normally have a zeal. And I want to speak to any pastors that are watching this program today. If When people get saved in your church, get them doing something straight away. Because when they are saved, that is when they have the zeal. Often they have zeal, but not the knowledge. That's why we have to impart knowledge. We have to train them. We have to give them something to do because a young Christian wants to be active for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't get them active when they are a young Christian, you will never get them active when they are old Christians. And the old Christians in your church that are active are ones that have always been active from when they were young. Train them, teach them, give them something to do because they have a zeal. And I remember over 40 years ago when I knelt at that altar in a church in Field Road, Forest Gate, the Healing Church of God in Christ, when I knelt at that altar, I wanted to know, God, how can I serve you? God, what can I do for you? I had a desire, and that desire is good. The trouble is that when a Christian wants to know how to serve God, what God's will is for their life, how they can best serve him, they are in a good place, but they are also in a dangerous place. Because the devil is not likely to get you to commit fornication or adultery. Oh, he gets some to do that. In fact, he gets quite a few to do that. But mostly, when it comes to young Christians, when someone comes to say, commit adultery, commit fornication, even if you do it, you know that's not God's will. You know that's not what God wants you to do. But the see, friends, if the devil can lead you astray in believing that what you are doing is God's will. And that's how he leads many people astray. That's how he got Eve to sin. Notice what he said to Eve. You will be like God. Well, don't all Christians want to be like God? Don't we all want to be like Jesus? Don't we all want to be holy, walk righteous? You see... The devil never said to Eve, if you do this, you'll be a sinner. You'll be ungodly. He said, if you do this, you'll be more spiritual. You'll be like God, knowing good and evil. You see, when we have a desire to serve God, the devil will try to lead us astray, doing things that we are believe is serving God. We see that over and over again in the Bible. But I want to give you five ways to find your ministry. Five ways to find your ministry. If you obey these five ways, you will find your true ministry. One of the things I want to say to you today, stop running to so-called prophets and prophetess to find out what God wants you to do. Many people have been led astray by false prophets telling them that they're going to be this and they're going to be that because the world is full of false prophets who will tell you just exactly what you want to hear. That you want to be a pastor, they will tell you, God has called you to be a pastor. God's called you to be a prophet. God's called you to be this. There are many false prophets that will tell you what you want to hear. Let me tell you, friends, if you want to know what God wants you to do, then go to God. Don't run to some prophets. Go to God. Seek God, and God will send the person to teach you, or he will direct you and lead you into your ministry. I am going to give you five ways to find your ministry. The number one is... Let childish fantasies in your life die. Let childish fantasies in your life die. Now, what do I mean by that? When I was a little boy, 
I would turn on the television or I'd go to the cinema and we'd see a cowboy film. And then David McKibbitt would be a cowboy. He'd be running around going bang, 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 these little guns. My father had an old wooden ladder in the garden. And that wooden ladder became many things. We, one day it would be a boat, it would be an aeroplane, it would be a stage wagon, we'd play on that. We would fantasise that I was a cowboy. And then we'd watch a police programme. Then all of a sudden, Pastor McKivitt is a policeman. He's fantasising about being a policeman. Then all of a sudden, that old wooden ladder in the garden, it became a police car. We fantasised about it. I don't know what programmes are on for children today. I remember fantasising about I was Batman, I was Superman. Whatever I saw, I fantasised. And there are many people that are mistaking now fantasies for God's calling. For instance, a young Christian will go to some big meeting in the, taking place somewhere in London and they will see some great big evangelist. And then in their mind, they start to imagine that they're preaching like Maurice Sorello. They're preaching like Benny Inn, like T.D. Jakes, like Pastor Ashimaloo, or somebody else. They begin to see that man and they fantasise that they are. The dangerous thing is, friends, is when we mistake that fantasy for being the calling of God. And there are many people in the ministry today that should not be in the ministry, but they are living out a fantasy. I remember watching a programme on television about Star Trek, and they've got these people called Trekkies. They dedicate their life, they live a life of fantasy, pretending that they are some kind of Trekkie. I watched a Doctor Who exhibition on television, and I saw all these grown men in their 40s and 50s, dressed up as Doctor Who. Some of them go around all the time. That is their life's fantasy. They're not Doctor Who, but they're fantasising. Let me tell you, friends, there are people in the ministry today that are there by fantasy. I remember going to a big town hall in London. I was invited to preach at a church there. When I went in that church, every hall, in every room in that town hall was eyed out by a church. Sometimes it was just one man, his wife and his children. And he was the pastor. And he'd be preaching like he had thousands there. He was living out a fantasy. Friends, let our childish dreams die. Don't mistake your childish dreams for God's vision for your life. Wait to hear from God. The second thing to do, if you and I really want to know God's will for our life, is to walk in God's revealed will. Do what we know we should be doing. Do not expect to receive a ministry or a calling if you are not walking in integrity, in holiness, and you are not obeying the word of the living God. There are some things that all Christians should be doing. What is God's will for my life? Well, there are certain principles that, that are true for each one of us. And as we obey them, God will reveal his ministry for our life. One thing is, friends, you and I should be faithful in our attendance to the house of God. In Hebrews 10, 25, it says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. You should be in a local church. You should be submitted to a local church. You should be financially supporting your local church, obedience to your local church, because that is the way you're going to find your ministry. If you don't attend your local church regular and you don't support your local church, then you are not obeying the word of God. And it's no good you say, what is God's will for my life, when you are rejecting what God's will is for your life in a not being member of a local church. You should support your local church 
before you support anybody else, including me or any big evangelist. Now, we do need your support, and if you feel like God is leading you to support us, you can phone any of the numbers that are coming on your screen. We'll tell you how to do it. But your first support should not be to us. It should be to your local assembly. And then you can support others as well. So we must walk in God's revealed will. We must be at the house of God on time. We must pay our tithe. And then, thirdly, we must be a people of praise and worship. That is what we should be doing. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. What's God's will for your life? Well, it is to be a people that praise God. You should be a person that is continually showing forth his praises. Notice those words. It says that you should show forth his praises. It didn't just say shout praise. Now, the Bible does tell us to praise the Lord out loudly. The Bible says, praise the Lord, all ye people. Shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. It does say that we should shout praise the Lord, but there's a difference there. It says that we should show forth praises. What does that mean? It means that the life that we live should honour God. The way that we drive our car, the way that we act in our workplace, the way that we act in church, the way that we treat our wife, our husband and our children, the way that we... Sh behave should show that we belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are ambassadors of Christ. A true Christian is not one who is holy on Sunday, but he lives holy, he lives righteous, he walks in integrity, he walks in honesty seven days a week, 24 hours in a day. We are to be a people that praise and worship God. Not just praying, but praising God. You can praise, it, praise God that you're alive today. You can praise God that you've got, that you can walk, that you can talk. You can praise God that you've got a job. You, there's so many things that you can praise God about. Maybe you've got a bad arm. What about praising God for the good one? Maybe you've got a bad leg. Instead of moaning about the bad leg, praising God for the good leg. Instead of looking for things to moan about, look for things that you can praise God about. Be a people of praise. And four, we are to be holy. We are to be a holy people. Holiness is not an option. The God that is called us is holy. And if we are serving God, we must serve him in holiness. A holy God will never call us to live an unholy life. A whole, when you are saved, you are saved from sin, you are not saved to carry on sinning. You are saved to serve him. You are saved to walk in integrity. You are saved to walk in holiness. We are to be a people, we are to be holy in all manner of conversation. Let me read it to you. 1 Peter 1, 15 to 16. But as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. In all manner of conversation. It doesn't just mean in church on Sunday. It means when I'm with my wife. When I'm with my children, wherever I may be, in fact, even when you are alone. I went to a meeting several years ago in Stratford, East London, and I heard a preacher say something that I have never forgotten. He said these words, what you are when you are alone is what you are. That's the real you. What you are when nobody is looking, when nobody can see you, when your pastor is not around, 
when the deacons are not around, when your fellow Christians, when it is just you by yourself, what you are then is the real you. Not what you are one hour on a Sunday morning, not what you are in the prayer meeting, not when you are when the pastor, the priest, the vicar, whoever it may be, comes and has dinner with you. No, it's what you are when no one else, that's the real you. Let me tell you, friends, just think of the kind of programmes you watch on television. That shows what you are. The kind of things that you download on the internet, that shows what you are. The kind of websites that you visit, that shows what you are. The way that you act when somebody cuts you up when you're driving, that's the way that you are. What you are, when no one else can see you, or you think no one else can see you, that's what you really are. I remember hearing a story once about a little boy. His father was taking him to go scrumping. That, that means he was going to trespass on somebody's land and steal some fruit. And uh, as he climbed the fence, he looked right and he looked left. And his father and his son said, what are you doing, Dad? He said, well, we're going in to steal some stuff. I want to make sure nobody can see us. So I'm looking this way and I'm looking that way so to make sure nobody can see us. He said, Dad, you forgot to look up because maybe God is seeing you. I tell you, friends, God sees everything that you do. And therefore, we should not live to please man. We should not live to look good to our fellow man. We should look good but to God, who sees everything we do, who hears every word that we speak, who knows the desires of our heart, we should be holy. For it is says, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. If you want to know whether you are right with God, look at the life that you are living. That is God's will for your life. Don't worry about whether you're going to be a pastor, whether you're going to be a deaconess, whether you're going to be an evangelist, whether you're going to be some big apostle. Be concerned about this. Walk in holiness because that is going to show, because that is God's will for your life. That is God's will for your life. In 1 Peter, in 2 Peter 3.11, it says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in, in all holy conversation and godliness? Let us live right. Let us live holy. Even when things go wrong. I once heard about a woman in Jamaica. The, uh, uh, she was a Christian, but her husband wasn't a Christian. And, she, and he kept opposing her. But the more, the more ungodly he acted, the more godly she became. The more godly she acted. And one day he made her some cuckoo and flying fish. We did a Jamaican, uh, so, so, some, not cuckoo and flying fish, it was um, ackee and salt fish. She, he made her some ackee and salt fish in Jamaica. And... Uh, when he cooked it, as she gave it to her husband, the husband threw it on the floor. And you know what she did? He said to her, why don't you cook me something decent? She got down on her knees, picked it up and said, sorry darling, I'm not a very good wife. I don't know how you would behave. You'd probably, if it had been like some of you, you'd probably say, that's the last meal I cooked for you. But she didn't act that way. She acted godliness. She got on her knees, picked up the food and said, darling, what would you like a cookie for you? You know what happened? That husband burst out crying, went down on his knees and repented and gave his life to Jesus. And that man is now a pastor because she lived holy in 
when a man was being ungodly. I remember one time I was driving my car through London and I saw a sign on a car to tell me the driver was a Christian. So I tooted my horn to let him know that I was a Christian and he stuck his two fingers up at me and let me know that he wasn't really a Christian. He just had a Christian sticker on his car. The fifth thing that we are to be and that is faithful. Be faithful in all that God has called you. Be faithful. I remember many, many years ago, I used to preach in a church in Battersea. And there was a Ghanaian man there. And whatever the church needed to be done, he did it. The Bible says, whatsoever your hands find to do, do it. He volunteered for every task. The pastor would say, we need someone to clean the toilets. He raised his hands. He raised his hands. The church needed cleaning. He raised his hands. And you know what happened? Today that man is a pastor. He has a church with 400 people because he learned to be faithful. Oh friends, there's so much I could say, but time is against me. We've come to the end of this broadcast. Remember the address of the church that's on your screen now. Make a note of that address and we look forward to seeing you. The times of the service is on your screen. I hope you made a note of them. We've come to the end of this broadcast. And until we meet again, this is Pastor McKivitt standing in for Bishop Goodwin of the Dominion Christ Church saying unto you that no matter what the problem may be, Jesus is the answer. In Christ Church, London, under the leadership of Rev. Godwin Ajegbu, invites you to our power service. Deliverance, healing, restoration and salvation. Are you broken or oppressed? Come and be partaker of free salvation. Our service times are Monday Deliverance Service, time 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Friday, Bible Teaching and Prayer, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday Service, Holy Ghost Move, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come and receive power to overcome in life. For more information, please call us on the following number. 0742948 or email revgodwin at dominionchristchurchlondon.co.uk or dominionchristchurch at yahoo.co.uk. Trains and buses station, Alberton station, Wembley Central station, Wembley Park station, Hanger Lane station, and Harlesden station.